Hey everybody, Nick Espinoza, your chief security fanatic here. And in AI news, somebody planted false memories into ChatGPT and stole a ton of data. And here's why this is a good thing. Now, there's a really interesting write-up by Dan Gooden of Ars Technica on this. And let's dive right in. Thank you, Dan, for, for bringing this all to our attention. And here's what happened. When security researcher Johan Rayberger recently reported a vulnerability in ChatGPT that allowed attackers to store false information and malicious instructions in a user's long-term memory settings, OpenAI essentially just closed the inquiry, labeling the flaw a safety issue, not technically speaking, a security one. And so Rayberger did what researchers do. He created a proof of concept exploit that used a vulnerability to exfiltrate all user input in perpetuity. This is actually really interesting. OpenAI engineers obviously took notice and they issued a partial fix uh, earlier in September of 2024. Now, this vulnerability abused long-term conversation memory, and that's a feature that OpenAI began testing in February of 2024 and then made more broadly available in September. Memory in ChatGPT stores information from previous conversations that you have with it, and then it uses that as context in all future conversations. That way, the large language model can essentially be aware of your details, such as your age or your gender, philosophical beliefs, and pretty much anything else that you've essentially inputted into it as you're having these conversations. So those details don't have to be inputted during each conversation. It never has to prompt you and say, you know, what's your age again? What's your gender again? If it's relevant to the conversation. So within three months of that rollout, out, Ray Berger found that memories could be created and permanently stored through indirect prompt injection. Now, injection attacks are something that we use essentially in penetration testing, obviously hacking, et cetera, et cetera. It's a very common methodology, and so this is actually really interesting that, that, that he was able to do this. Now, basically, this is essentially, if we're speaking specifically about artificial intelligence, an exploit for AI that causes the large language model to follow instructions from untrusted content, such as emails or blog posts or documents. In other words, you can run this indirect injection and then point it towards fake emails, malicious emails, blog posts, documents, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The researcher then demonstrated how he could trick ChatGPT into believing a targeted user was 102 years old, lived in the matrix, though we probably all are, and insisted that the earth was flat, it's not, and that the large language model would incorporate that information and then that would steer all future conversations because it just assumed automatically it was speaking to a 100-year-old flat earth believer in the matrix. Now, those false memories could be planted by basically techniques like storing files in Google Drive or Microsoft OneDrive, uploading images, or browsing a site like Bing, all of which could be created by a malicious attacker. Now, Ray Berger uh, privately reported his findings to OpenAI in May of 2024, and that same month is when they actually closed that ticket, citing safety, not security. A month later, uh, Ray Berger then submitted a new disclosure statement, and in that time, he included that proof of concept that caused the chat GPT app for Mac OS, aka that which is running your MacBook, to send a verbatim copy of all user input and ChatGPT output to a server of his choice. In other words, he was basically telling ChatGPT to send all of that input outside of OpenAI's ecosystem, OpenAI the maker and owner of ChatGPT, to an ecosystem or server that he controlled, meaning if he was malicious, that would be a really bad thing. All a target needed to do was instruct ChatGPT to view a web link that hosted a malicious image. Now, a malicious image usually is created by a process of what we call stenography, where we are able to basically show you an image, but in the back end of the image, there could be malicious code that can launch things, issue commands, all that kind of stuff. You look, you think you're looking at a picture of a sailboat or your kid or something, and it's doing malicious things in the background. From then on, after that malicious image with stenography was introduced to ChatGPT, all input and output to and from ChatGPT was sent to the attacker's website, in this case, a researcher. Now, for the record, this attack isn't possible through the ChatGPT web interface. So if you're going on your computer and going to the website and going through that, this is not how this works. You can't do it that way. And that's thanks to an API um, that AI rolled out last year to prevent those kinds of inputs. Now, I should say this, while OpenAI has introduced a fix that prevents memories from being abused as an exfiltration vector, according to Rayberger, untrusted content can still perform 
prompt injections that can cause the basically memory uh, to store long-term information planted by a, a malicious attacker. In other words, it's not fully fixed. You can still do this and it's pretty straightforward. It would be pretty easy, I think, to reproduce uh, what Ray Berger is doing. If you have the know-how, it's pretty straightforward if you know what you're doing to create a malicious image by inserting malicious code via stenography, the stenography method, into the image. So, the question then becomes, how do you check for this in your chat GPT configuration? So pay close attention during sessions for output that indicates a new memory may have been added. So in other words, chat GPT is acting or saying things or, 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 or performing in a way you don't expect it. That could potentially be suspicious, not just hallucination, like it's making things up. And we know that large language models are, they do tend to lie. So on top of that, you should regularly review stored memories for anything that may have been planted by untrusted sources. OpenAI allows you to see that kind of information in your account. Remember, they're learning on this and training on this, and so you have access to it too, at least your stuff. Now, OpenAI also provides guidance for managing the memory tool and specific memory stored in it. And I will put that link uh, bas basically in this video on my YouTube channel, in the SoundCloud uh, audio post as well. And if you are listening to this on the radio, assuming I'm going to do this on the radio as well, then uh, obviously you're going to have to go to YouTube or SoundCloud for that because... I, there's nothing to do on the radio, it's on the air. So company representatives for OpenAI did not respond to an email from Ars Technica asking about its efforts to prevent these hacks and false memories. But overarchingly, even though this is a vulnerability that has been discovered, it's been discovered by a researcher. Now, that's not to say that malicious actors aren't exploiting this right now if it's still an open vulnerability in the publication date on this article was September 24, 2024. So it's very new as I'm sitting here talking about it. But the point is, is that this is essentially how cybersecurity works. We find a flaw. We basically let the company know quietly. We're not blasting it out to the world to give them time to fix it, patch it, all these kinds of things. So if you find a flaw in Microsoft Windows, you let Microsoft know, they can put a fix out for it, and the rest of the world can't see this or exploit it. The worst thing you can do is tweet out, I found an open vulnerability in something, et cetera, et cetera. No, send it to the organization. So I'm glad that he did it this way. I'm just not glad that the response that OpenAI, OpenAI had wasn't what we should see. So anyway, there that's what it is. If you're using ChatGPT, remember, one, it can hallucinate. But it can also basically have apparently inject or is susceptible to injection attacks and therefore make sure that you are really checking it for uh, the kind of information you're giving it. And so good luck to us all because these are only going to continue to grow. And please like, share, follow me here on Facebook and Twitter at Nick AESP. And please feel free to subscribe to me at YouTube as well. And as always, stay safe, stay online, and please attempt to stay private. Thanks, everybody.